welcome to Tea Science Tuesday. I uh, haven't had one of these in a long time. Um, beard's a little bit longer. It's a rare mid-dissertation writing Tea Science Tuesday. Do not expect another one uh, for a while at least. Um, hopefully I'll be able to start doing them again once I'm a little bit less busy. Um, but I wanted to do this because I got something interesting in the mail. Um, <clears throat> I got this. Um, it's called Ivan Chai. Um, apparently it's also called Meal Court. There's the, the name. So I got this from the Astoria Tea Company. And uh, it's a, a tea, it's not really tea. It's not from Camellia sinensis, not from the tea plant. It's um, <clears throat> fireweed. Fireweed is a different plant. It's not uh, Camellia sinensis. So what's interesting about that, right? Nothing, right? We drink all kinds of things that aren't tea. We drink uh, chamomile and mint and all that. This is processed like tea, like black tea. Um, so that's kind of cool. So I wanted to just taste it uh, on a Instagram Live and uh, it's caffeine free. So I'm doing it in the evening and I'm not gonna be worried about being over caffeinated. Um, I've never tasted this before. I have no idea what to expect. I'm gonna treat it kind of like black tea. Water is gonna be at boiling in a minute here and I'm gonna brew it in a, gong, a Gaiwan Gong Fu Cha style. Um, so that should be interesting. And I thought I'd talk a little bit about other, other plants and things that are oxidized. Um, yeah, to make them besides tea. Cause I think it's kind of interesting that we do all this really intricate processing with the tea plant. Um, and we don't do it with anything else. And it definitely, you know, does something, right? Because if you if you chew on just raw tea leaves, they do not taste good. Um, if you just brew raw tea leaves, it's not tasty. So why don't we do it with other stuff? So I kind of want to just like think about that a little bit and talk a little bit about the chemistry and the processes and taste this and give you guys some, some tasting notes, I guess. So uh, I guess I'll start with brewing it since water is up to temperature and then I'll have something to drink while we're chatting. And I have no idea how much of this to use. Well, actually, let's warm, let's warm everything up first. Let's do this, do this legit Gong Fu Cha style. Warm up my Gaiwan. Um, so I first heard about this from uh, uh, Jeff, the Lazy Literatus, on uh, Instagram and Twitter and all that. Um, and he's the one that got me sort of interested in this. He's, he's uh, written a couple of blog posts about interesting herbal teas um, that are a little bit more kind of complex and satisfying than, you know, just like simple chamomile or mint. Um, so I'm hoping this will kind of be in that realm of something a little bit more interesting. And, oh, it smells really good. It smells really plummy, um, raisiny almost, kind of like a dried fruit smell, like um, almost like an aged oolong or something. That's cool. It's, a re it's really nice. I wish you could smell this. Uh, I'm excited now because that smell is really nice. I have no idea how much tea to use, but again, I'm just going to pretend like this is a black tea. I'll give you a close-up here of these, these leaves, or I'll try to. So, yeah, it looks like black tea, basically, right? Um, pretty interesting. Uh, yeah. Uh, that looks like enough. I'm not going to rinse it, because I have no idea... I don't expect there's any reason I need to rinse it, I guess, is why I'm not going to rinse it. Um, yeah, you can see that. It's, man, it, it looks just like black tea. And that has a really nice aroma, too. A little bit different than the dry leaves. Oh, man. Excited to try this. Um, so, yeah, this is, uh, it's fireweed. It's, um, the, the Latin name is... Caminerium, Caminerium, I guess, the folium. Um, it used to be Epilobium. That's what I knew it as, Epilobium, I guess, the folium. But I guess apparently at some point, Epilobium got changed or got merged into Caminerium. That's really hard to say, genus name. Um, hello, uh, Mia Bellskin. Welcome. 
So we're talking about this uh, weird uh, fireweed tea called Ivan Chai. Um, it's not made from Camellia sinensis, but it's processed just like a black tea. And I'm gonna say that's been long enough for this first infusion. So we'll go ahead and pour it and see what it tastes like. It looks, I mean, it just, it looks exactly like a black tea. It smells like a black tea. Man, how do I know I haven't gotten duped here and just been given some black tea? <laughs> it really, it smells malty. Um, malty, fruity, plummy. It does, doesn't taste quite like a black tea. It definitely tastes a little bit different. Well, I don't know. It, ta it tastes like a malty black tea, I think. It's good. It's got like a little hint of a sourness at the end, but that's maybe just because I brewed it too long. Hmm. That's that's really tasty. That's going to be like a go-to evening caffeine-free black tea alternative for me. So yeah, again, I got I got this from Astoria Tea Company. But you can find it other places if you search for Ivan Chai or Ivan Chai. I'm not exactly sure how to say it. Apparently, the name Ivan Chai or Ivan Chai um, is just so chai is just the Russian word for tea, uh, same in you know Hindi and a bunch of other languages. Something that sounds like cha or chai just means tea. Um, and Ivan, I guess, is just a common Russian name. <laughs> and so, uh, I guess this is like the equivalent of calling coffee a cup of joe or something. I don't know, <laughs> something like that. So, Ivan is just a Russian guy's name, uh, chai is the, is a word for tea. So, it's made from fireweed. It's a, previously called Epilobium angustifolium. This is a plant that grows all over um, in uh, Siberia and also in Alaska and parts of the Pacific Northwest. It's really pretty. It has these purple flowers, um, sort of purple pink flowers, and it forms these pretty big areas. Um, and so this is something, if you live in one of those areas where fireweed grows, yes, it's that fireweed. It's the same fireweed. Um, and you could make this yourself. Uh, in fact, when I Googled it, uh, when I Googled Yvonne Chai Processing, uh, first thing that came up was a blog post about how to make it on your own. And it is made using exactly the same steps as black tea. You start by withering the leaves, then you roll them to bruise them to start oxidation. You allow some time for oxidation to happen, and then you dry it. Like, that's it. And you can buy green Yvonne Chai um, as well on the internet, which is they do a withering and then they do a kill green step where they heat the leaves to stop oxidation and then they dry it. So um, I think we've talked about oxidation before on Tea Science Tuesday, but as a refresher, what's going on in oxidation is when you damage those leaves, you bruise them, um, it breaks open compartments in the cells and it mixes two things, uh, one being the catechins, which is a, are a type of flavanol, type of polyphenol that's found in tea, but also in other plants like fireweed. Basically all plants have polyphenols of some sort. And then uh, it mixes those with an enzyme called polyphenol oxidase, which like its name sounds, it oxidizes polyphenols. And that causes them to turn into other chemicals and to stick to each other and polymerize, uh, making larger chemicals that have a brown color and a different flavor um, that contributes to the tea. Now, there's also a whole bunch of other stuff happening during oxidation. There's other chemical reactions going on, um, but that's one of the big ones that turns green tea leaves into black tea. And it's the same thing that's happening when this fireweed tea is produced. So this sort of got me thinking about, you know, what other teas, are there other non-Camellia sinensis, you know, herbal teas that are processed like this? And there are. Um, rooibos is one of them. So you can buy green rooibos online. So rooibos or red bush tea is uh, not from the tea plant. It is from a plant in the pea family, uh, Aspelathus linearis, is that right? Yeah, Aspelathus linearis in the pea family. It's a shrub. It's it's kind of this wiry looking shrub with uh, really reduced leaves but green stems. And it's also processed with oxidation, um, taking advantage of this sort of natural defense mechanism that plants have. So that's really cool. 
Um, so I don't know much about how rooibos is processed, but the one video that I found and watched um, was very interesting because they actually, they cut the leaves and chop them up and then they do something that looks kind of like the wet piling step in making shupur. So they spread the, these piles of the leaves out, thinner piles than shupur. Shupur is like, you know, a meter thick or something. These were uh, only about that thick in the, in the video. And then they wet them actually. Um, but I don't think this is microbial fermentation, microbial ripening happening because it was a really short process. It was only 24 hours. Um, although now that I think of it, that's like enough to make sourdough rise. So maybe there's some microbial activity going on in there in addition to the polyphenol oxidase enzymes and other endogenous enzymes that are already in the plant um, going to work. Um, yeah, I don't know. It'd be really interesting to learn more about. Um, and then they, they dry it after that, right? So then after it turns from a green to sort of a reddish color, they dry it out. So really similar to how we process tea, um, but this is not tea. Honeybush is also like that. So honeybush um, is really similar in flavor to rooibos. It's actually a different genus entirely. It's Cyclopia as the genus. It's also in the pea family. It looks really similar, um, but it's a, it's a different plant. And there's actually a number of different species of Cyclopia that I think are used to make honeybush tea or tisane or whatever you want to call it, herbal infusion. Um, but it's also processed like that. So that's really cool that there's actually multiple, multiple non-tea plants that are processed like tea. And I believe all of those processing, all of those things were invented independently. So I believe that fireweed tea, the Ivan Chai, I think it predates the introduction of Camellia sinensis tea into Russia. I'm not, don't hold me to that. I'm not exactly 100% sure. And uh, Jeff might know more than this if he uh, watches after the fact. He might be able to correct me. Um, so, uh, so that's kind of cool that this, this idea of, of oxidizing plants to make, to change the flavor um, has been invented multiple independent times. So yeah, um, I'm gonna steep this one more time and see if I can push it a little bit longer. I don't know how well this re-steeps. It's pretty unusual for something that's not tea to re-steep well, but this is pretty unique. It looks and tastes a heck of a lot like black tea. Um, so we'll, we'll see what we can do. Um, yeah, it's a little bit sour. That's my only, it, it's a lot like black tea, but it's a little bit sour. It's pretty malty. Um, but the smell is phenomenal. I love it. Okay, so while that's steeping, there's one other thing that I thought of that's kind of related to this. Um, so a friend of mine was talking to me about this, that he was talking to an old hippie friend of his, and this old hippie was talking about how he really actually missed the flavor of the really low quality Mexican brickweed that people used to get in the 60s. So this is, if you're not familiar with this, uh, back in the 60s, there was not a lot of cannabis cultivated in the United States. A lot of it was brought in illegally from Mexico. And to do that, they would take the cannabis flowers and compress them into these bricks to make it easier to smuggle across the border, right? You could fit more. Sounds kind of like shoe poor origins, right? Like poor cakes, actually, when I think of it. And he claimed that that flavor of that really, you know, low quality smuggled uh, marijuana was better or different than what we see uh, nowadays, which is these really bright green sort of verdant flowers that are nice and fluffy and independent. And that this brickweed was kind of brownish and it got us thinking, we were talking and thinking, you know, I wonder if there's some oxidation that happens during that compressing into a brick. Um, I don't know. I'm guessing it was probably the, the flower was probably really dry already by the time they went to do the compressing into a brick. So uh, probably not, but maybe, maybe there's some oxidation happening. But it sort of got us thinking about like, well, why, why isn't there anybody playing around with that sort of stuff? With cannabis, with other herbal teas besides just this Ivan Chai and Honeybush and Roibos. You know, why isn't there oxidized mint leaves? Like, has anybody tried that? Maybe it's great, right? 
this would be something you could try if you grow mint in your garden. You could pretty easily like pick some leaves and let them wither and then roll them, watch them turn brown, and then taste that <laughs> in comparison to just tea, uh, mint that's been dried. You know, could you do this with chamomile or with tulsi or something like that? There's all kinds of herbal teas that we drink that we just basically just cut the leaves and dry them. But what if there was some processing involved? And it also makes me think, you know, could there be an oolong version of this fireweed tea, right? Why do we why do we just have this fully oxidized version? Is there room for some like artisanal um, processing in some of these things? Or like rooibos, right? What's a rooibos oolong taste like? Is that is that a thing? Is that possible? Can we get a mid oxidized rooibos? Um, I sort of don't see why not, and it's just like a. Maybe maybe people have tried this and it's not worth it, but it might also be just this like totally unexplored realm of herbal teas where um, there's this opportunity to make something that is really complex and interesting and varied depending on the processing um, uh, and something that's, you know, like tea uh, just because of that. So interesting ideas to think about, I think. And let's just give this second infusion another try. It's a little bit darker this time. I let it go longer. Smells more like it tastes this time, if that makes any sense. It's good. I mean, it's it's not black tea, but it's pretty darn satisfying and uh, and fairly close to like a light malty black tea. And the, the aroma is, is really nice. That's my favorite part of it. So anyway, this is my, my review, sort of first taste of this fireweed tea, also called Ivan Chai. Really interesting plant. And hopefully um, uh, you've maybe, this has maybe inspired you to think about uh, other herbal teas that, you know, could be better than they really are, could be more interesting than they, than they are currently um, with a little bit of added processing. And I don't know, let's try some stuff out. Maybe, maybe we'll find something really interesting um, by trying tea processing methods with other edible drinkable plants. Um, yeah, so uh, that's all I have to talk about really. The last thing I'll say, uh, for those of you that are watching still, um, I have a dissertation defense date. <laughs> I've been like, I haven't told anybody about it. Um, really, uh, but it's April 9th. I'm going to be defending my dissertation. It's all going to be all about tea and um, climate change and leaf hoppers. Um, and I want to be able to share it with, uh, with you guys, people that are interested in, in tea science um, out there, not just other scientists, but people in the tea community. And so I'm going to try to figure out a way that I can stream the defense um, live or record it or something so that if you want to watch, you can watch. Um, so yeah, April 9th is going to be, April 9th, uh, 9.30 a.m. Eastern time is going to be the date, and uh, I'll keep you updated when I figure out how to stream it, where it'll be, what platform it'll be on, and yeah, you're all welcome and invited to listen, um, and so I hope you come, I hope you uh, enjoy something about tea science, um, and uh, so that's it for, uh, for this Tea Science Tuesday, and I hope you enjoyed it. And uh, who knows when the next one will be? Probably not until after I defend my dissertation. So, you know, maybe sometime in April we'll, we'll do another one of these. Uh, so, all right. Until then, uh, see y'all later.